tobacco and maybe start smoking. Um, I grew up in, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up in the projects in Covington, Kentucky, and everybody smoked, and my parents smoked, and, you know, it was just something you did. I mean, it was crazy, it's crazy to say it that way, but everybody smoked, and so I didn't even know, I mean, like, it didn't even occur to me that I wasn't supposed to. But it's a different time now. The education wasn't there. The, you know, the lawsuits against the tobacco companies, if they had happened, I certainly hadn't heard anything about them. We have too much information now at our fingertips to ever think about smoking. But um, at the time, just that's what you did. You grew up in Covington. You went to homes. You smoked cigarettes. I remember being in the bathroom at school and... Um, my teacher, I knew exactly when she was going to come in to check the bathrooms at lunch because we all smoked in the bathrooms. And so I would get in there, I would smoke my cigarette, and then I would come out complaining and yelling that somebody was smoking in there and we all smelled like cigarette smoke because of it, even though it was me. So, I was a terrible. Um, I am the youngest of six children and out of the six of us, uh, four of us smoked cigarettes. Um, I take that back, five of us smoked cigarettes. Um, so my dad, um, first problem I remember him having with his health due to cigarettes is he had a massive heart attack when he was in his early 40s. And um, he continued to smoke after he had a um, really big heart operation, which was in the 1970s, which was a huge deal then. Um, and then um, when I was 19 years old, 20 years old, um, he was diagnosed with, he was 55 maybe years old, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And that's what made him stop smoking. But they, they did a lobectomy, which means they took out a lobe of his lung and um, the cancer unfortunately came back and spread to all his other organs and within 13 months of his diagnosis, original diagnosis, he was dead. Um, the other, my other uh, parent, my mother, um, she smoked two packs a day from probably the time she was an early teen, in her early teens to uh, the day she died. She was still smoking um, with an oxygen tank and having to take breathing treatments and everything. She had really bad COPD, <clears throat> could hardly breathe at all, couldn't move around. And um, she died in 2016, December of 2016, right before Christmas. A long, slow, painful death. And it was just absolutely horrible. Um, I remember having dreams as a child um, of my parents uh, dying. And I, I would sneak and get, wake up in the middle of the night after a horrible nightmare. And I'd go and I'd take all their cigarettes. I'd take curtains of cigarettes and I'd break them up and throw them in the garbage. And they never, to this day, they never found out it was me who did it. Um, didn't stop me from smoking. I started smoking when I was 15. Um, quit smoking um, because I had um, another pretty traumatic event happen. Um, I quit smoking in 2008. Um, my brother, uh, who was five, he was five years older than me, um, he, on his birthday, on his 42nd birthday, he had a massive heart attack and died. Um, and that day I decided I was going to quit smoking and I've never touched a cigarette since then. Um, family wise, I still have one brother who smokes, but all the rest of us have, well, Charlie died, but the rest of us have all quit smoking. I do have a brother who uses um, E6. So. I think that, um, you know, it was terrible seeing my parents die. Um, my dad was only 57 when he died because he died in the early 90s. And um, he didn't get to see my kids or anything like that. So that was really hard. Um, I wasn't even married. I feel like I've been married my whole life. And I, I wasn't even married when, um, the, you know, he, he died when I was so young. But um, I think the worst part about it is it kind of smacks you in the head with your own mortality when you see your brother have a heart attack and die. Um, you know, I mean, it's, you know, your parents are a different generation, and it's awful, and it's horrible to see them die, but to have a sibling die so young, I mean, I was in my 30s, and I was thinking, you know, I'm not that far from 42, you know, and, and I don't want necessarily want to leave my three children because of cigarettes, so um, that was that was quite traumatic, and, you know, I just, I don't have any regrets that I stopped, but, you know, I wish Charlie would have had, I wish he would have had a second chance when he didn't have one. Um, what is one advice you would give someone thinking of starting uh, an addiction to cigarettes? Um, the piece of advice that I would give to someone thinking of starting cigarettes is that your body is, when you're young, your body is, 
actually pretty resilient. I mean, cigarettes are going to do damage no matter what, but you're pretty resilient and they're so addictive that you're not thinking about when you're 30 or when you're 40 or when you're trying to run two miles or five miles or whatever. And, you know, it, it's... You, you always have to think ahead and look at the future and you know it would be like saying hey why don't you gain 150 pounds now do you know what i'm saying and see when you're 40 how your knees feel about you carrying that around because it's not okay so i'm just saying that you know don't start something because it's too hard to stop just don't start it just your best bet is to just stay away from it okay 